We're on day two now. What a towering weekend. Six o'clock yesterday morning we started fishing. Three o'clock early hours this morning we stopped fishing. And the time is now half past eight and we're back out on it. It's always nice to see different products available in the market. Here we have the latest product available in the market for storing your rigs. Here we have the rig wrap storage system. Now I think this is an absolutely cracking invention. The last thing you want to be doing all the time is heading straight back to your tackle box and rubbling around trying to get a rig out all the time. Easy access straight onto your tripod and holds various sizes of rigs. On the top we have the smaller size casing. It unclips. Nice way to attach your rig. Hooks wrapped round, closed up and placed back straight into the holder. If you're using different size rigs, i.e. if you're bassing or you're raying, it's got rigs for all. This is the next size up. Exactly the same again, just a larger size. Now you can get four of the large size casing and two of the smaller size casing, or you could get 10 of the smaller size casings, which makes ideal flounder the rigs. At the end of the session, these will give you the added bonus of not having to untangle your rigs. As long as obviously you take your bait off the hooks as, as normal, take home, dip in the sink, clean straight off all your rig, leave to dry, hose all around the casing itself to obviously for, to drain off and um, straight back, ready in your tackle box for the next session. Now these can be connected to your tackle box or they can be connected to your tripod. If you're on a boat, they actually have fittings where they um, can be connected onto the side of the boat. And um, at the end of the day, it's a cracking invention for us anglers. Now you can find out more information and prices on the rig wrap storage system on the Sea Dog Tackle website, which will be linked on the end of the episode. Got a simple rig on here, little watch weight. Trace come off the bottom, a few attractors, peeler crab bait, size six hook. Exactly the same on the top. A little bit larger bait on the top. I've scaled down now just to try and pull a fish out. As long as I can get a flounder, I'm happy. Um, I'm not going to go and try and put a big bait out with a size 2 work. I'm trying to pull in a specimen now, this late in the competition, with only an hour or so to go. So let's see if we can get something on this then. I'm fishing, there's a little channel that comes down in and it just sort of like flattens on a foul. And then again on from there, there's a little trough. And that's where I'm aiming to try and get my bait in. Hoping any fish will come through the bridge. Coming across there, coming down over, see any food and bits and pieces gathering up. There's my bait, bang. But um, so we, we'll find out few bites coming on now See, seeing a bit more aggressive trick is obviously not to hit into the bite too, too quick let the flounder suck the bait back and take the hook last thing you want to be doing as soon as the rod goes bang is hitting into it and pulling the hook straight out of his mouth just waiting for that bite to develop it's been going for about 10 minutes now just small pull downs typical fl flounder bite I've had it sometimes, you don't even know the flounder's on. It's just sat there with the bait. Obviously baiting up with different things, like look at your rod, a couple of taps where you're not looking, and it's just sitting there. Bring him in, flounder on. Other times I've had it where it's just complete hit, bend over, flounder takes off. Most of the time that's where you're in the channel and the tide's flowing down through. Flounder picks up the bait, gets lip hook, and then just takes off down channel. But, um, fingers crossed I can have a fish out. Let's find out. Slowly pulling the bait back. Just to feel the initial take.
there we go. Yeah, definitely something on here. Yeah, I think we have a winner. Yeah, I think it's only little. I'll bring it to the side, mate, you land in there. Yeah. Yeah. All weekend in search of a flounder, managed to pull one out. Not the biggest of fish, but um, look at him go, look. Lovely little fish. Not the specimen we were after. I don't think it's gonna make the weight, but at the end of the day, we've had the target species. As you can see, a lovely murky color little small mouth on him, a few little tractors, it's obviously tempted him to take the crab bait. I'll get him weighed now, but at least we've had one. Right, for weighing the fish, set of scales, of the Berkeley scales here, cracking scales, carrier bag. Get the fish in. It's not going to go to the weight we want. Fourteen and a half ounces. Small fish, but to be honest, it's nice to see a flounder. I do now is getting returned back to get bigger and fight another day. Right, about to be released to fight another day. And off he goes. Lovely species of fish. Over the December and January and February period, as the temperatures drop to the low, this is the time to start targeting the specimen sized fish. And the team is one of the best by far, along with Kingsbridge, targeting the specimen fish. Um, North Devon estuaries, Cornwall, Cornwall estuaries all hold the large specimen sized fish. Putting the time and the effort in, you'll get that fish you're after. Right, Carl, coming to the time we've got to head down to sea view now, mate. Yeah. Um, interesting 48 hours. Yeah, it has oh. been, mate. Yeah. Chucked everything at it. A variety of different rigs, ledgers, ledgers with pop ups. Everything really, yeah. managed to get one out, but um, not the size we were after. There's a lot gone into this weekend with preparation with rigs, baits, um, obviously plans and different yeah. things. It's not just something where you yeah. can just get together on a Saturday morning and go and buy your ticket. You, you, it obviously takes time to make sure everything's ready so you're constantly fishing all the time. But we've given it all this weekend, yeah. haven't we? Totally. And, um, we've had fish, but just not all the fish we were after. We're going to have to go down to Sea View now for the weigh in and um, see the winner and the prizes. Right, I've got three flounders here from today's event of Seaview Angling Competition. Yesterday's fish were released yesterday, but Andy's tagged them, as you can see here. And um, basically, anybody what catches these fish, if you take them up to Seaview, you'll get £10 off in shop. So, about to release this fish and let him get bigger and fight another day. The first fish about to be returned. Here it goes. There it goes kicking. Look at him go, look. That's what it's all about. That's what floundering's all about and competition like this with Andy's, obviously it's a great competition because um, keep them in a bucket and they'll go back. There he goes. Bury himself in the mud that one. 
toch verkiezen. There he goes. Great to see. Just making sure they're going back. There he goes. Seaview Angling will be doing this competition every year now. Um, so fingers crossed we can see a few more of you guys on the competition next year. But now we go over to a midweek session I had on the flounder. Well it's Tuesday the 2nd of December today. Bit of a chilly morning. Got down here bright and early for low tide. It's now 8 o'clock in the morning. It's just approaching low tide. And um, I've got two crab baits out for the last half an hour. And um, there's been a sign of the old flounder attacking the bait. I've gone for a different approach today. I'm speaking to a guy in uh, Seaview Angling, the actual winner's dad actually, of the competition. And um, he was saying that he's always had better success with the flounder by keeping things basic, just a simple running lead. So um, no attractors, so what I'm doing today is um, giving it a go to find out if um, I can have the same success with it. I've always used attractors um, and had some fine specimen fish on it, but um, well, it's definitely developing. Lovely morning, it's starting to get colder now, so over the end of December and January period, I'm hoping to get some half decent ones out. Oh, it's definitely, definitely developing. Absolutely knackered, I am. Not a lot of sleep over the last few days, but it's been great fun. See if we can pull one out then. Okay, constant bites on this rod. Here we go, as you can just see, it's a size 2 or work, but you're still getting the small flounder. It's just taking on the rag bait, as you just saw, and um, lovely little fish. We're getting back to fight another day. As you can see, the tide's slowly making its way up the mud bank now. We could do a frost kicking in a little bit more, trying to get these better fish out, but they're about, about an hour into the flood. Nice to see a fish out, Just trying to use up a lot of the ragworm I've got left over. Normally I would come down here with a peeler crab, I wouldn't touch a rag, um, obviously because you just plague with crabs half the time, but to be honest, I haven't been plagued that much with the crabs so far. Every time the worms come back, it seems to be and nibbled like but um yeah i'm hoping now will be the sort of time we're going to be picking up a few, few flounder lovely day for it fingers crossed we can get a good one my target is now a specimen for the camera specimen weights two pound but a nice three pounder would be very nice mm -hmm. 